Obviously, the trade deadline was a lot of talk. Um, your trade in 2012 is one of the most talked about trades amongst Blue Jays circles uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, it was the middle of the game. You were, you were playing the Mariners, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I want to know what, what was going through your head during that game and then after when you got the call from Alex Anthopoulos um, you know, that, uh, that, that you were moving on and you were going to Pittsburgh. Yeah, you don't really think about it when you're out there on the field, but leading up to it, I knew there was a chance. But there's also that attachment to the storyline my ego had started to project that I was going to be a franchise player. I was going to spend my whole career in Toronto and, you know, hopefully have my name up there next to Jose Batista as he's going up there in a couple of weeks. So I think that's, you know, reflecting back on where I was at at that point in my career and what age I was uh, and just how I kind of got off course of what I really needed to stay focused on. So it kind of came out of nowhere, even though I kind of expected it. But again, as I tweeted, it's just so much emotion that goes into it that quickly gets swept aside because you're showing up the next day at a new field with a new group of guys putting on new colors, getting ready to go to battle. How hard was it to handle the expectations of being a young player and making the jump to the major leagues? Like, I know playing hockey, you have it in your head how you think your career should go, and then certain things happen along the way that seem to kind of derail you or stall things. Like, how hard was that to deal with as a major league player? Yeah, I think it's true in most professional sports as well as life. I think we all have some sense of how we want things to go and how we think they're going to go based off of what we're doing in the current moment and how things have happened in the past. But again, that's uh, the lesson we all learn at some point. Life has a different plan for us. And, you know, for me, there was a lot of the things externally that I started to read about and and kind of become my attitude and, and my preparation towards pleasing other people instead of doing what I knew in my heart was most important was keeping my head down, staying focused on the task at hand and, and taking the punches as they came. Well, you have an amazing tweet. Uh, we were going through your Twitter before having you on the show today. And, and for those of you listening, I recommend checking it out at Lunchbox Hero 45. And your tweet is about who you are versus what you do. And I'm curious in your personal experience, how you manage that. Was there someone you spoke to? Maybe it was a family member. Maybe it was a sports psychologist. How do you handle creating that identity for yourself that's not just as a ba- uh, baseball player? I think that's something uh, until late in my career, my last year, I started working with who is my now uh, business partner. His name's Seth Taylor. He's a local therapeutic life coach and worked with a handful of MLS and MLB guys. James Paxton is one of his clients that I've become very close with over the years. And you just see how careers, life in general, don't go as according to our plan. And I think working with him at the end of my career and transitioning into life after being a baseball player uh, really afforded me the opportunity to dive deeper and say, yeah, there's a ton of value to working with sports psychologists. There's a ton of resources that I was able to use in Toronto and Pittsburgh and, and other stops along the way, whether it was internal through an organization or external, but really being able to dive deeper into that identity issue uh, that I believe was starting to build at such a young age with, as we see now, how polarized and pressure packed youth sports are and the amount of success that I had uh, was, you know, top of my class all the way through and, and getting to the big leagues at 20 years old. Again, if you would have told me back then I was only going to scratch out five and a half years, of major league service time i would have laughed at you uh if you would have told me i would have played independent baseball i would have laughed at you so these are things that again baseball life is is just a humbling experience and i think for me being able to let go of that identity understand where it kind of was rooted from and how along the way you know i was just pouring gas on a fire instead of really being able to focus on on the things that i know are true to myself and, and most important day in and day out yeah, I guess it's always sort of coming back to the process versus the outcome. And, and I like how you touched on the pressure and something we were chatting about a little earlier in the show is being young. And we use the word fearless and naive as you, you kind of don't really realize what you're doing. You're just out there playing the game you love. And it's kind of as you get older, you realize, holy crap, I'm playing in the big leagues. And I guess as a follow up to that, something else we're discussing on the show today is players potentially not wanting to play in a, in a market more specifically hockey because it's Toronto. But what was your experience like with the Toronto media? I know obviously the blue Jays are Canada's only team. So there's probably a little bit of hyper focus uh, nationally. Did you find any additional pressure from playing here with the Jays? I'd say it was double edged sword. I mean, Toronto is one of my favorite cities in the entire world. Uh, the fan base there was incredible to me. The media, I think, you know, did right by me despite uh, all the ups and downs that I went through. So I'm fortunate to have great relationships with the guys that used to cover, you know, on the beat, on the national side. It was really 
again, I was 20, 21, 22 years old going through this transformation of what I thought was going to happen. And, and I think, and I truly do believe the Blue Jays organization and a lot of the people around me believe that I could be or achieve, right, in air quotes, more than what I achieved in my career. And I think having set those expectations and starting to invite the external expectations and, and reading the articles and, and, you know, once social media started looking at Twitter and looking at the comments and, and riding the waves, right. And we all talk about, you know, being able to stay even keeled. And I think that's just something with professional sports and people that are in the spotlight, there's a, a little bit more of a, a platform and that pressure is something again, that it's an external thing internally. We don't, have you know those expectations of living up to hundreds of thousands of people's views on what you should be in this world it should be focused on what we think we're capable of doing but more importantly what we know we're, we're able to do through hard work and staying focused on that process